Hello everyone, my name is Sharonda Parker and today we're going to be talking about this never-ending debate of the styrofoam plate versus the paper plate. Oh yes, we're getting into it today. And we're going to be talking about cooling tingle. Okay, this is a new product by WET. A lot of people don't know this, but did you know that when you put any type of coolness around the vagina, a cool towel, a hose, any type of mint, that cooling sensation helps with arousal. Well, make sure you tune into this episode of Sex Talk with Sharonda. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe. Enjoy the show. Come on, I'll you right up you leaders, bitch. Hello everyone, welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. I wanna welcome you all today. First of all, I wanna tell you to make sure you start liking and sharing this video. Today's topic is gonna to be about setting a standard, okay? Um, I'm always petty in my Facebook group because I'm always talking about real play versus paper plate. And what I noticed that when I'm dealing with some women, because in the group, it's like women from all walks of life, right? All age groups, young, old. Um, some have been raised by extended family. Some have been raised by single parents. Some have been raised by two parents. Some have even been raised by the foster care system. So what I'm saying is we have women that come from different backgrounds, and what I have learned is there's a certain standard, core values, things that we believe. But when you talk to people, the values change from person to person, and that is completely normal. I have a set of core values. I was raised by my mother and Mommy, I always have to throw mommy in there. Even though my mom was a domicile parent, I spent a lot of time with mommy, my grandmother. And mommy instilled core values in me. And these are the values that I live by. And these are the values that I have instilled in my daughters because I have three daughters. With that being said, the very first core value that has been instilled in me is when you do things, you do it with the spirit of excellence. Meaning everything that you touch, everything that you put your hands on, everything that is put in your hands, you handle it with grace, and you complete the task with the spirit of excellence. That is why I have always been an overachiever. I have always done well in school. I have always done well for myself. But I was raised with core values. It's not to down talk or downplay the next person who core values may have been something different. Now, I say this because when I live with my mother, who was a domicile parent, her household flowed differently. But her lifestyle was different too. 
And I looked at my me who lived in a very nice neighborhood, who had a two-story home, who never struggled financially. And if she did, I never saw it. Who was able to feed anybody that came into her household, um, strangers, whoever. She was always able to help and be of assistance. My mother, on the other hand, her household ran differently, but she also had a different set of core values. And the thing is, when you're dealing with young people, certain people are going to be impressionable to them. And a lot of times the person that's going to be impressionable to them is the person that they see in their eyes that has the better life from what they see. One of the core values that was taught to me by my grandmother, Sylvia Palmer, was we feed men on real plates. Real plates. Styrofoam plates or for children. Cookouts. When you got a large uh, amount of people at your house, uh, family functions and stuff like that. That's what the styrofoam plates are for. Now, this is something that seems to rub a lot of people wrong, okay? Because the first thing that I say when I say I serve my husband on a real on a real plate, hashtag petty post, meaning I'm being petty and just playing about it. But no, I honestly serve my husband on a real plate. And it's a reason for it. Because I was taught to do things with the spirit of excellence, even down to fixing a plate of food. You strategically put the food on a plate in a way that it looks presenting to the eye when you're serving it. You don't throw stuff on top of each other and just have it all slop and that's, that is not how you do it. That's how I was raised. Okay? You don't serve a man on a plate to where a plate all heavy and then it's bending and all of this kind of stuff, stuff running all off of it everywhere. That's how I was raised. So the argument that a lot of women have is, and I'm going to go through these arguments one by one. One, my husband does not mind. My boyfriend does not mind. He go out and buy the paper plates. That is fine. But a lot of times people do because they don't know. See, the men in my family that came through Sylvia Palmer's household would be offended if you serve them on a paper plate because they know better because they understand what it is to be served. They understand what it is to be catered to. They have a certain type of understanding that what it means to be treated in a certain type of manner. So I seen one woman that said, my grandfather would get upset if we fix his food on the paper plate because your grandfather knew better. He understood his position in the family and in the household. If you have a pastor to come to your house, you go and get the good stuff to feed them out of, you go and, you go and get the nice stuff to feed them, or you go and bring them a paper plate. If Jesus Christ himself came to your house and had dinner, are you going to give him a paper plate, or are you going to feed him off of a real plate? You're going to give him your best. I'm asking, because when you're dealing with a man, he is the king of the castle. And what does it look like me going to get good stuff to feed completely strangers, pastors, even Jesus, and then I can't even do the same thing for my husband who takes care of me, who is my provider, who is my covering. But a lot of women don't understand what it means to have a covering. This is going to be real deep and it's going to go over a lot of people's head. But see, when you have somebody that is a covering, that means that they are responsible for you. But the problem is a lot of y'all in the household are the covering and you got a man there. You covering and you making sure everything happened when that's his job. So the reason it doesn't bother you not to feed him on a real plate is because you don't, it, a lot of respect for that is not there because he not on his job. The next thing I was told don't nobody want to have to wash all them dishes. Well, if you're in a household and it's only two of you, then it's only two dishes to wash outside of the pots that you cooked in. But if you're in a family setting, like my family setting, that's what your children for. That's, that's where chores come in at. That's where you teach them to do chores. You teach them that in a household, you have to clean. See, let me tell you something. 
I, I wanted to get deep down in your spirit in my household that, that cleanliness is a part of living. So it don't bother me. I don't lose no sleep in putting a real plate in the sink for my, for my daughters to wash. I don't feel no type of way about it. You know why? I want it deep down in your spirit that you got to clean up, baby. I want it deep down in your spirit that this is a part of life. I want it deep down in your spirit that ain't shit going to be easy for you. And I'm not trying to make anything easy for nobody. If we got a family gathering like we do family day on Sunday, then yes, all, every, all the children, everybody eat off the paper plate, but Sharon Park is going to still present Spencer with this real plate. So you still going to have this one real plate to wash, even if you don't have the other ones to wash. Yeah. See, we got this mentality that I ain't got, I don't want to have to wash out, baby. If you got, uh, if you, if you delegating responsibility in your household, then everybody up in there can wash the dish, even your sons, your daughters. Everybody can wash the dish. Everybody can have a chore to do. See, when I finish cooking and we sit to our table and we eat dinner and we finish eating dinner and everybody bringing their place to the sink, I got somebody pulling out. I got somebody pulling trash. I got somebody that's uh, taking the food and putting it into containers and all of this kind of stuff because don't put pots in my refrigerator. I'm funny about that, too. You can't put pots in my refrigerator. That's why I buy containers. But again, values. I, a lot of people, I, I always start back to see, I don't have a china cabinet only because I don't have the space for one in my home. But I've always wanted one. But I remember when we used to see grandparents with china cabinets, real china, real dishes and stuff like this in their house. And you knew that that's what the good stuff was. Yeah. And you saw her feed granddaddy on the plate with the, with the good stuff. But a lot of y'all talking about what y'all men don't require because a lot of them have not even been raised around other men. They have grown up around women. And I'm stressing grown up because some of them wasn't even raised. They just grew up. So they don't understand a certain set of values. They don't understand what it is to have a certain level of worth in a home. They don't understand. So I was talking to my husband last night and I said, a lot of women say that they husbands don't mind being served on a paper plate. And he said, because they don't know no better. They don't know no better. You can't fault people for what they don't know. You can't fault people for not setting a standard in their household. And a lot of times because certain standards aren't set for anything in your life, your whole life chaotic. This is this get bigger than, than plates at this point. This get bigger than plates at your at this point. Your whole life chaotic because a standard has not been set. See certain things that we know that we can't do to each other in my home because a certain standard has been set. Okay, so then I hear I shouldn't have to get out there and go to work come home, cook, and then have to wash dishes. If you are a married woman and you get up and you go out and work, it's by choice. And a lot of y'all say, no, I have to get out there and work. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because your husband is responsible for you. Your husband is responsible for you, children, and everything that come behind you, your husband is responsible for it. The thing is, a lot of you can't manage to live off of that one income because you want a certain type of lifestyle. I tried being, I, I tried to doing a stay in that home type of thing. It didn't work for me. I didn't enjoy it. I, I just didn't enjoy it. I actually like getting out, coming out into the workforce. But like this morning before I left, I started marinating my steaks. Yeah, they marinating right now while I'm here at work today. Because when I get home, I'm going cook steak. I prepped. So when I get home, certain things are already done. See, the thing is, because I chose to get out and go into the workforce does not mean that certain obligations to my household still don't stand. Now, I'm at work. But guess what? Even if the clothes wash and they got clothes in the dry, Spencer going to get the clothes out the dry and fold them. Meaning that you got somebody that, that's there that understands helping with the responsibility of the household because both of you all are going out there and going to work. 
And he very well can actually start cooking dinner before I get there because he understands that I'm at work too. But the problem is some of y'all have men in your households that don't understand that you ain't really got to get up and go nowhere because he's responsible for you. And with that being said, being that I'm choosing to get out here and work and be a help to our household, then you should be a help to our household too and help out with some of these chores. And these children that live in this household should have a responsibility to this household and help out with some of these chores. But it's too much children laying, and, laying around and, and not doing shit. Too many children don't have enough responsibility. Yeah. Some of y'all have teenagers that just lay every day all day and don't do shit. But you got a man that lay every day and all day and don't do shit. And guess what? Everything on your lap. Because you're not delegating responsibility. So you got to explain to them, look, I choose to get up and get up out of this household to be able to give you certain things, the, the extra luxury stuff. See, cable, that's extra luxury stuff. Game systems, that's extra luxury stuff. But you still have an obligation to this household too. So if you find yourself getting worn down, and you find that you are the only person doing everything in your household, I need you to start delegating responsibility a little bit better and start letting them know, even husband, letting them know, okay, look, I'm getting off from work, but when I get off, I expect you to do this. I expect you to do that. And husband, I need you to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because see, sometimes people ain't going to just do it on their own. Sometimes you really have to tell everybody what you need done. So with that being said, 2021, I want you to set a standard in your household, okay? 2021, we setting standards. We setting standards about our living. And the thing is, when it comes down to my daughters, marriage is not the goal because I'm not raising them to be wives. I'm raising them to be happy, okay? If they choose to be a wife, they have a, a great foundation that has been set in front of them if they choose to be a wife. But the thing is, even if you choose not to be a wife and you choose to do it for yourself and serve yourself on a real plate, you understand the value in it. You understand the principles behind it. You understand it. It's just a set of core values. Some things matter to one group of people that don't necessarily matter to the other, and that's completely fine. But when you tune into the Sharonda Parker show, please understand that Sharonda Parker is going to talk about the things that she feels are important. Sex is important. That's why I talk about it. Serving is important. That's why I talk about it. Catering is important for both people. Date nights are important. Certain things are important. That's why I talk about it. I seen a woman that said, because I was just really playing about a uh, wife school. And she got on that. Well, I want to know who going who who teaching what licensed professional gonna teach the wife school. I'm gonna teach the wife school. I've been married 22 years. I have children. I have been a wife. I have been in the workforce. I'm a business owner. I'm a woman of God. And I have a master's degree. But that part don't even matter. It don't. And I'm a certified sex coach. But what I'm saying is I am more than equipped to teach anything that I need to teach if it's going to help your life. But the problem is a lot of times certain things is going on. A lot of y'all don't y'all don't want help in your life. A lot of y'all want to just complain and be angry. Okay. So that's my real spill on this real play versus paper play. Okay. Because these type of lessons, believe it or not, it's needed. And I'm going to tell you why it's needed. Because everybody ain't grew up in a certain type of family structure to see certain things. And this is how we learn from each other. And let me say something else. I absolutely love it. When I was in school, I used to love debates. I love them. But I love hearing what the opposing team has to say about something. I like to hear people that think different differently than me. I like to hear what they got to say, because even if I don't agree with it, I can understand. And a lot of problem that I see amongst women is 
If a person don't agree with what, how you agree, you don't even want to hear what they got to say to learn how the other side feel. It ain't, it ain't necessarily trying to persuade you to think anything different. It's just letting you know that it's another mentality out there other than yours. And that's how you grow. That's how you learn. That's how you become intelligent. Because you need to know what the opposing side is thinking at all times. Okay? So, that's my spill on the plate. So, let me jump right into my product. I know y'all familiar with hauls. Okay? This part of my video is going out to Gedrick George. That's my husband's uncle. Years, 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 years ago. You know how you got that uncle? He gathered with the other men. And sometimes you got that uncle that's a little more, more hip than some of the other men in the family. Because this is how we learn. We learn by, by talking to each other. This is how we learn. Well, Gedrick George, that's my husband, uncle, married to Diane. Hey, Diane. Gedrick George was talking to some of the men in the family. Gedrick George talking about, y'all ain't never ate that pussy with no hoes. My husband was young in his early 20s. A lot of men eat pussy, but they ain't ate it with no hogs. And Gedrick said, ooh, you got to get them hogs and eat that pussy with them hogs. Boy, them hogs have them going crazy. You know, Gedrick giving the spill. And I love, see, that's one thing I love about Uncle Gedrick. He was never afraid to share information. Good, good information at that, okay? So... After this particular, I can't even remember what we was all there for. Might have been like an Easter or something like that. Everybody was going home, trying to stop at the corner store to get them a little pack of hogs. You know how they sell them in the lit, um, the little bitty pack at the corner store. Everybody trying to get them some hogs. Because everybody wanted to want to experiment about what Uncle get talking about, eating their puss with some hogs. <laughs> well, one thing that I learned, which I didn't know then, but... A cool sensation actually helps with arousal with women. And I don't know if Uncle Gidrick knew the science behind it, but, ooh, baby, when Thump ate that puss with them hogs, I was crawling. Bitch, I was crawfishing backwards. I was a flipping and turning, and because it was some, it was intense. Okay? So we got the hogs, and then we got the wet elite lubricant. So I want you to imagine that Halls and Wet Elite had a baby. And when Halls and Wet Elite had a baby, we have what's called Cool Tingle. You getting the coolness from the hall and the tingle from the hall, but you getting the lubrication from the wet. Imagine it. A lubricant that is glycerin free. That means it has no sugars. That means you ain't got to worry about it irritating you. Water based. Mm -hmm. With a touch of silicone. Mm -hmm. And it arouses you. That is going to be cool tingle. It has been added to the website. Please look up under featured items. Whenever I'm talking about something throughout the week, anything new is going to always be under featured items. Or you can search the product by name. Okay? Again, uh, that is going to conclude my sex talk with Sharonda. Also, make sure you go register for my fantastic fellatio class. Yes, that is dick sucking class. It will be virtual this year. And the $79.99 is basically covering the cost of your dildo. Okay, because I like quality products. So I'm not going to send you no little flimsy, no little small, little bitty dildo. This one here, 8.5 inches long, and it is hornable. Uh, it is harness compatible. Uh, it has a suction cup, so you can put it up against the wall and use it as a wall banger. And it is flexible. Okay, it's very realistic. It's, it's like top of the line. Okay. So, that's going to conclude Sex Talk with Sharonda. Of course, you see the website down below. You see the website? Go on the website and make your selections. You all be blessed.